the killer clam. Snorkeling on the beaches in front of my hut here, I found the following thing. Check this out, guys. Ah, uh, yeah. A giant clam. This is a subspecies of the super big giant clam. I'm going to show you right now that it's got little ridges. And this is its name. This clam is only a small cousin of the super giant clam, Tridacna gigas. Oh, wow! Amazing, isn't it? So, the fact is that in ancient times, white explorers thought that these clams were dangerous, especially the huge one, Tridacna gigas. And in German, it's even called the Mördermuschel, which is the killer clam or the murderous clam. Why? Because in their weird fantasy, when they looked down, they saw this huge maw opening up they had this perverted fantasy that you could stick your finger or your hand or your foot in there and it would go snap and you would be stuck down and drown. Absolute rubbish. These creatures are as innocent as it gets. They're just gorgeous and beautiful. However, there's a more interesting story behind these clams and it has to do with Oceania and the discovery of the islands by Stone Age people. As these people, Melanesians, Polynesians, Micronesians, started sailing into the vastness of the Pacific Ocean, of course they came upon islands, great, but they had one problem. Some of these islands were volcanic, beautiful, Stone Age, stones can make tools. Some of these islands were atolls, and atolls are essentially just rings of sand that came out of the ocean built on coral. There is no stone there. Okay, so you're a Stone Age guy. You arrive on an atoll, great. Picture postcard views, palm trees, white sands. Gorgeous. What's missing? You got no stone. How are you going to start working? Ah, human ingenuity. That's when they came to the idea and went, wait a second. These clams, especially the Tridagna gigas, are so huge. They're like huge, fat rocks. And they started using these rocks to make their stone tools, to make jewelry, to make bracelets, necklaces, but more important, they were able to make axes out of them. To literally chop down the trees, carve canoes, and survive without stone because they used natural shell stone. Human ingenuity is endless and it's fascinating to study these ancient cultures because they had to make do with what they had. Quick question to finish this. What is a person called that studies shells? An entomologist, an ophthalmologist, or a malacologist? First person to comment the correct answer down below gets a t-shirt by Firewalker. Start writing guys, let's have fun. All right guys, until we see you again for the next video, share, care, contribute, smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe to us. See you next time.